Hi everyone! Today I'm going to take you on a journey of the evolution of our human species and the kind of diet that we ate along the way. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Since I'm going to be discussing diet, I'm going to skip the aurorans and go back 5.5 million years ago. So during this time, our homonid ancestor was Ardipithecus adaba. There's evidence that this ancestor ate a lot of fibrous foods, such as nuts, um, because of the way that they would chew their food. Archaeologists would look at the bone structure and they found that they chewed at the back of the mouth more often. Now I'm going to move on 2 million years forward and talk about AU afarensis. So this ancestor is very well known for being in the direct line of our human evolution. This is because paleoanthropologists found over 300 different uh, skeletons of these ancestors. These individuals lived in Eastern Africa and have lived for over 900,000 years. So that's almost four times as much as our own human species currently lives. They are one of the longest lived ancestors. Now these ape-like creatures were originally herbivores. They would eat a, a variety of raw foods like leaves, uh, different plants and fruits, not so much fibrous foods like the nuts or tubers. However, approximately a million years after this ancestor came about, environmental conditions caused them to change their eating habits. Uh, this could have been due to drought, um, an ice age type climate change. It wiped out essentially most of the vegetation that they ate from. Due to the lack of plant food, uh, these individuals started scavenging. They didn't necessarily hunt for meat, but if they were walking and found, you know, a dead animal on the ground, they would start eating that. If you're also wondering how do we know what these individuals ate, paleoanthropologists would look at their teeth to see the different types of minerals or vitamins that are present in the teeth bones. Now around this same time, these ancestors started to play with fire. So they're looking for ways to cook their food. And this is what scientists believe is the cause of the unpredicted brain growth of these individuals that led to the genius Homo. The diet of these ancestors were essentially leaves. And those types of foods did not have a lot of calories or a lot of energy present in them. So being able to cook the food allowed us to extract more energy. If, if these ancestors found potatoes or pasta or other types of roots such as those and were able to cook those, we don't know if that would have caused the same effect in brain development as did cooking meat. Essentially, there's no property in meat that concludes that it is the reason why brains grow. If that were the case, then other animals like lions or cats would have also undergone the same type of development in the brain, but that is not the case, as humans seem to have the highest intelligence. There is also this confusion that humans adapted or evolved to eat meat. Adaptation refers to a group of people or individuals that change their lifestyle to be better suited to their environment. This change is needed for these individuals to survive in their new environment but that's not the case for humans. Uh, in the current day, we do not need meat to evolve as a species. Those who eat plant-based have the lower risk of all these diseases and are in the healthy BMI range. So essentially, if we are speaking in terms of, of evolution, those who eat plant-based are the fittest to their environment. If we didn't have medical care, then we wouldn't be saving all these lives caused by diseases due to diet. We also want to speak about adaptations. About 70% of the world populations lose their lactase genes after weaning. That's why a majority of humans are lactose intolerant. If dairy was part of our evolutionary track, then we would be able to digest it properly and we wouldn't have negative consequences out of it. But as we know, it leaches calcium from our bones because it's very acidic, causing things like osteoporosis. The protein casein in milk is highly correlated with cancer. Now I want to move back to the Roman Empire during the time of the gladiators. Now watching movies like Gladiator and reading and hearing about gladiators there's a misconception that they ate a lot of meat and that's how they got strong to fight in the arena. Gladiators were mostly vegetarians. Their diet consisted of barley and vegetables and wheat. A forensic study examined bones of gladiators from a cemetery and found that the bones contained a high amount of the mineral strontium. 
Animal products contain very negligible amounts of strontium and plant matter contains a lot of it. So this concludes that gl gladiators, their diet consists of mostly vegetables. Now I want to talk about monkeys, chimpanzees, orangutans. Now primates are our closest relatives. It is said that we share between 95 to 98% of the same gene. The human gut is remarkably similar to primate. We both share long digestive tracts in order to break down plant matter. So speaking of this, what do primates eat? You guessed it, they were herbivores for the most part. The diet of nearly all apes and monkeys consists of fruits, nuts, leaves, um, and the occasional insects. So yes, they did have meat occasionally, but that's if they were, you know, walking around, they'll have it as a snack, but it's not the majority of their diet. Lastly, I'm going to talk about moral evolution. Humans are capable of discerning between good and bad. We have that moral capacity to understand right from wrong. No one is arguing that we ate meat along the track of our human evolution. But the real question is, what is the most suitable lifestyle for the current state that we are in, our current environment? We are not, you know, two million years back where there is an ice age and there's no fruit to eat, so we have to eat meat. We have evolved from that stage and we are currently here where there's a variety of options to eat. And what is the most moral way to eat? A way in which we do not harm any other individual on this planet. Why are we focusing on what our ancestors ate 10,000 or more years ago when the circumstances are different now? We have many opportunities to eat a variety of plant foods that are available year-round and that in turn benefits our health our environment and all of the animals that have become a product. Because of our highly developed brains, we need to choose the best way to eat. There's many contexts to what we put on our plate. It's not just, you know, the product there. There's a lot behind the scenes that goes into it. And as intelligent human beings, we should really try and do our research and see what is going on with what we eat. The bottom line is eating meat is not helping us thrive in our current state. It is causing us to have a lot of diseases. Plant-based diets can help you thrive. They are what we should be looking at moving forward in our evolution. Plant diets have found to reverse diseases and show a great impact in a positive way on the world. All right, so in summary, our longest lived ancestors were herbivores. Fire is said to be the major cause of our brain development, not necessarily meat intake. Our closest relatives, the apes, and the primates, uh, were mostly vegetarian. Contrary to common belief, gladiators were not omnivores, they were essentially vegetarian. Meat will not benefit our human evolution. A plant-based diet will help us thrive. And as moral beings, we should choose the most sustainable and the most peaceful way to live. Thank you guys all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Let me know what other kind of topics you'd want me to discuss. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!